Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Juggernaut number three. But it's about more than that. It's about, it's about hope. <laughs> I remember reading this thing by James Cameron. He said, whenever you don't know what your story is about, just say it's about redemption. Uh, so anyway, uh, before we start, Impossible Stars uh, will be uh, ending on November 26th. So you've just got a couple more days. Uh, and uh, it's a really awesome story. You're going to love it. So Juggernaut is, uh, I've had a lot of fun with this miniseries. It's pretty crazy. It's a little wacky, but very, very fun. Um, it's Fabian Nicieza and uh, why am I blanking on Rob Ron Garney? Uh, and uh, they both started. You know, they're both you know kind of classics of the uh, uh, '90s Marvel comic scene, and they're back. And I guess Juggernaut's a little emo with the uh, the black nail polish. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> this is a awesome classic Marvel miniseries and I just kind of wanted this forever. Like I don't, well, I do know why they did it, but I don't know why they didn't do this earlier. Um, so, uh, for people who don't rem remember, I had, uh, Jawbreakers Lost Souls come out in 2018 and it was it was very successful uh, it was a group effort and we all did very good on it and it was based on 1990s Marvel and it was quite successful and there's a large audience that will buy things come back for more and also people at Marvel were actively trying to harm me at the time and I just used to always think like all they have to do is just do what I'm doing, <laughs> like do some classic 1990s Marvel stuff and nobody's gonna buy my stuff. You don't need to destroy me. You can just take away my audience and all the money they give me. And they didn't really do that until now, or what I should say, until next year. But let me actually review the comic that I'm reviewing. So it's uh, Kane Marco getting his back his powers, dealing with a lawsuit. Um, I enjoyed pretty much every single second of this. It was classic, fun, Marvel superhero storytelling. Um, I know some people, this uh, sketchy art style is not their cup of tea, but I absolutely love it. Um, this was essentially, except for a... It's always a little awkward when you when there's a writer that's like in late middle age and they're writing teenagers and they're not very good at it. Uh, so they just kind of flash back on TV shows from 20 years ago. So they have this uh, teen sidekick named uh, D Cell, and she says, "Bored now?" And I'm like, "Oh gosh, it's not 1996. No, don't no." She should have said, offended now. That would have been topical. Uh, bored now is just, oh, oof. Um, so uh, there's some uh, great action. And uh, I loved <laughs> pretty much every second of this. I love this giant sand monster. Uh, I love the fights. I love this little tech support team that's over there helping them out. I kind of forgot the plot elements that led that to happening. Oh, I think they're from Damage Control. And Juggernaut has a sidekick who has a YouTube channel. Uh, it's fine. It all works just fine. I think, uh, especially when you, um, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know whose hand this was. I was like, who's grabbing her there? Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's just an image on her t-shirt. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just laughed at this. Okay. So I actually had... A laptop this large in like 2001. So, uh, it's a little joke. Obviously, this is supposed to be some gigantic contraption, but it just looks like a really large <laughs> laptop. Um, but a uh, uh, fun, quick, light, exciting. I even stuff like this. Now, at one point, you say, "Oh, this is kind of scribbly," and on the other hand, you just say, "Like this is essentially perfect. It's conveying every single thing it's supposed to convey." Uh, very economically, I might add. There's a great part where they knock this sand monster's head off and then they start analyzing it. <laughs> and the girl says, this is really gross. Um, but, yeah. 
I love this. I love pretty much every part of it. That being said, I think Marvel missed the 90s nostalgia wave by about two years because they're bringing out this book called X-Men Legends, which sounds freaking amazing. It's a new in-continuity series featuring legendary creators such as Chris Claremont, Louis Simonson, uh, Louis Simonson, Larry Hama, Peter David, and more. I am hoping the and more is and the senti. Uh, for the first story, Fabian Nicieza revisits one of the greatest mysteries from his run, the history of Adam X, the third summer's brother. I remember just some guy had some major issues with this uh, cover right here. Um, so what this is, is they're basically finding a bunch of loose ends from the X-Men in the, uh, sounds like the 90s mostly, and there were tons of loose ends. It's funny, if you go back and read, um, I think even like Cartoonist Kayfabe, they were showing like an old X-Men issue, and, and uh, Chris Claremont often on the last page of a story, when one storyline had been resolved, like there would be one or two pages at the end of the story where he would introduce this new concept or a character or plot element or a mystery and sometimes he actually did <laughs> answer what that was but there i remember one time seeing a, a website and it was all of the dangling plot threads from the chris claremont years and there were a lot of them like he just throw in like suddenly like oh you know this character oh yeah they have witch heritage and then like never do anything with it oh this character she's actually secretly a mermaid you ever going to follow up on that? Eventually. Maybe. <laughs> but, um, uh, great, uh, it was a great fun time. The problem is, is that the mainstream American comic book industry has effectively been destroyed. I described, a, I predicted a super apocalypse and it's happening. Uh, DC has had two uh, bloodbaths, a, a culling of employees, employees, not contractors, employees. Um, uh, Marvel looks to be having one basically any week now. Um, DC is basically, uh, you know, looks like they're getting out of the direct market. Uh, the direct market has a lot less books uh, and basically the uh, PPP loans, uh, payment, payroll protection program, uh, kept a whole bunch of things afloat and that's ending. So by the time it gets out, It'll just be kind of a, that's nice for the remaining stores and the remaining readers and the remaining dollars that are not going over to, where? Crowdfunding. Um, so, we will see. I mean, honestly, I would suggest to Marvel, start getting into a crowdfunding game. I mean, you put out some super awesome comic that is only, and don't do the, you know, get it first and then in stores. What? Just make it exclusive. Just makes it this awesome, you know, storyline, uh, great classic, beloved characters and creators. So anyway, uh, this Juggernaut is a recommend. I don't think I've ever recommended Waiting for the Trade. Uh, it's it's fine as a, a floppy, even a digital floppy. Um, so uh, go check it out. And then I'm totally down for this X Men Legends. But like I said, I think it's I think it's a, a little bit uh, uh, late. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Patreon and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks, bye.